I don't know about you kids these days with your computers and your cell phones, all your high flute and technology. In my day, all we needed to have fun was a stick and a piece of string, maybe some thumbtacks. All right, um, I want to think about some things that we know. Um, well, you know how to make a circle. You know, you, you fix a center and then you just make the distance equal all the way around with it. That's called the locus of points definition. It's the collection of points that are equidistant from a given point. That's a circle. You know, you know how to do that. Now I'm going to build on that. Um, instead of having a center, I'm going to have what I'm going to call two foci, or their, their focuses. It's the plural of focus, foci. So I'm going to have two foci. I'm going to have a string then and put it around it like this. And what I'm going to make is an ellipse. And so if you'll notice, on this ellipse, I'll just say it while I'm drawing it, every point, the sum of the distance from any point on here to the fo two foci are the same. So in other words, if I go this plus this, that's a constant, right? This is a constant width, that's a constant width. Any point that's along here, this length plus that length always has to equal the same amount. That's a locus of point definition for an ellipse. And uh, ellipses are interesting. You know, if I, if I spread this out a little bit, if I make it wider, uh, you can hopefully think about what my ellipse is gonna look like. It's gonna be flatter. like that and then as I as I make this narrower as I make as these points come closer and closer together it they're it's more like they're at the same point right so what will happen is my ellipse becomes less squish and it becomes looking more and more like a circle so again these are called foci we could call this focus one and focus two two foci I'm gonna draw the collection of points uh, the sum of whose distances are equidistant from the foci from each focus. Now let's think about some pieces here. This ellipse, it has a center here. That center is, is right halfway between the two foci, just like it's halfway between those two vertices and these ones as well. Um, remember from last week, this distance across here from the center to the widest parts, that's called the major axis. And then half of it is called the major radius. And then this is the minor axis. And then that distance right there is called the minor radius, right? Just from the center to the edge. So we have a minor radius and a major radius. What I wanna do is think about some connection between those two and this distance from the center to the foci. It's equidistant, so whatever direction um, I go doesn't matter. So I have this major radius here, I have this distance from the center to the to the one of the foci I'm going to call that C so you know what I think I'll do here is I'll make a right triangle and now if I knew how long this was I could find C using the Pythagorean theorem so how long is that well what's super convenient is take a look at this notice that this distance from here to here is basically half of this Right, like, and this little section that's right here takes up that distance right there. So if I go like this, I hope you can see that that distance is equivalent to that distance. Here's why. If I'm straight up, I have an equilateral triangle. So this side equals that side. And if I go from here to here, this distance I'm not counting this part that connects these two. I'm just counting from here to here, then to the edge, and then back to that focus. So notice that that, if that distance right there is that distance right there. So this whole distance is the major axis. So that must be the major axis. So half of it would be the, the major radius. So this distance right here is the major radius there, that distance right there. So to find this distance, this C distance right here, um, I'll just call this A and call this B for now. I know it's different than what we're used to for the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, B is the um, hypotenuse, but I know that 
a squared plus c squared equals b squared, which means that if I know the minor radius and the major radius, subtract c, uh, let me think about this, subtract a from both sides. In other words, this distance is the major radius squared minus the minor radius squared. So if I want to know how it is from how far it is from a focus to the set midpoint, I can go major radius squared minus minor radius squared because the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, that's the end. So here is what that means for me for uh, ellipses. I'm just going to have some ellipse. So let me sketch some things that I know. I know the center is at three two, so have some center at three two. I know that uh, 16 squared is 16 is 4, 4 squared. So in the x direction, it goes over 4. So 4 in this direction, 4 in this direction. So that would mean that my height is the same, but I added 4 to the x value, and I subtracted 4 from the x value. So I've got that. Um, and then in the y direction, 25 is 5 squared. It's 5. So it goes up 5 and down 5. So basically, I have this outline that looks a little bit like that. Um, and if I go up 5 from here, the x value stays the same. It didn't move left, right, or all at all, but it went up 5. So that goes up to 7. And then if it goes down 5 from here, no x, y change, that would be negative 3. And then there is a sketch of my ellipse like that. Everything's marked, and it's drawn as best as I can do, right? Um, so then next piece is going to, my question is, where are the foci? What are the C values? Well, one thing that I know is that um, I have this Pythagorean identity for them. C squared is uh, the larger one of these minus the smaller one, right? So basically, 5 squared minus 4 squared. So I, I'm not scoring the 25. I'm scoring the 5. I'm scoring this actual, this actual distance right here. So... 25 uh, minus 16 is equal to c squared. 25 minus 16 is 9, so c must be 3. So that means that c, that is the distance from the center to the foci. And the foci will always fall along the major axis, the longer of these two. So if c is 3, then that puts me, I don't know, maybe about here and here. Let me label those, since this is up 3 from there, it would be 3, 5, and down 3 from, from that center, this would be 3, uh, negative 1. So there's an example. I'm going to generalize real quick. I'm going to erase this, do a little generalizing here. Um, and so I know that c squared is going to be the bigger one minus the smaller one. I don't know which one is larger, which one is smaller, so I'm just going to write that for now. Notice that... Uh, the way that I combine these to get C, the distance to the focus, uh, is the opposite of this. Like if I was adding in the original equation, I'm subtracting these to get there. Technically, it's the absolute value of these because I don't know which one is larger. But for now, um, I'll just say that. Just remember that's the bigger. So my center here would be the point HK. And then I'm offset A in the X direction. So if I get out here... And here, this distance that's right here is A. So this distance right here is A. So that would mean that this would be the point um, H plus A. This would be the point H minus A. And then B is my offset in this direction. So I'm, I, you know, I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to write k minus b, k plus b, and again, this distance here then would be b. And then depending on which, which one of these was my um, major axis, my major radius a or b, I would, um, I would put the foci along that major because uh, it spreads out that way. But let's just say that a is the larger of them. That means my, my foci plural of focus, would be along that major axis. And this distance right here is C. 
So this would be the point uh, H minus CK. This would be the point H plus CK. And again, if B was larger, they would be here and here instead. But they're always along the major axis. So hyperbola, how about if I had something that was well, let's sketch what we know. We know the center is at, uh, I'll make this a plus this time. Is that three, negative two? I know I'm offset of four in the x direction. So this distance right here is four. And so that would make this point, um, I'm adding four to the three. So this would be the point seven, negative two because the height didn't change, the y didn't change, but the y did. Subtract four from three, negative one, negative two. Offset of three in the y direction, so up three, down three from there. So this would be the point, uh, up three would be three, one. Down three would be three, negative five. And again, I know this is hyperbola because this is subtracting. Um, I know my asymptotes, go corner to corner on that frame. It's x squared minus y squared, so it's gonna be this way and this way. Now, the foci, the focus for these, um, the shape always wraps around the focus. So I know my foci are gonna be outside. They're gonna be out here and out here. And if I, if I think back to that locus of uh, points definition for an ellipse, it was the sum of the distances. Uh, for a hyperbola, if I measure the distance from each foci, I subtract. Like this, this longer distance minus that shorter distance, that's always going to be a constant, any point on here. So if I took this point right here, this distance minus that distance would be the same value for any point on there. So subtraction, which is interesting, subtraction shows up in the, uh, in the equation. So let's figure out where the foci are at. There's a nice symmetry here. Um, just like when the ellipse for addition, we added those values to get C. In this case, I'm sorry, we subtracted. In this case, we add them. We do the opposite of what the equation says. So 16, uh, not 16 squared, but 16, 4 squared, plus 3 squared equals C squared. Again, the way that I get that, this distance, this C distance to the focus is I combine these square terms down here with the opposite operator. Um, so this would be 25 is c squared, so c is 5. So that means this distance is 5. So if I add 5 to that negative 2, that gets me up to 3, 3. If I subtract 5 from that negative 2, it gets me back to 3, negative 7. So for hyperbola, you, sub you uh, add, do the difference. Uh, I'm sorry, the opposite. For an ellipse, you... Uh, you subtract. So same idea, if I have uh, x minus h squared over a squared, but instead of adding, I'm subtracting because it's hyperbola. y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Still got the center, hk. Still got this offset of a in that direction. Still got this offset of B in that direction. So this point right here would be, uh, again, H plus A K. Notice those vert vertices are in the same spots. Um, is just the direction that it's wrapping. And now since this is x squared minus y squared, I know my frame's going to go left to right, so my shape's going to look like... Oh, God, that was horrible. Sorry. Going to look like this. Going to look like that. And if I want to know where my vertices are now, I know they're outside. That distance is C. And the way I get it is A squared opposite of this plus B squared 
equals c squared. So this is going to be the point uh, h plus c k. This would be h minus c k. All right, big idea. To find c, which is the distance from the center to the focus, I use these Pythagorean identities. In this case, instead of adding them, I subtract them. It's the opposite of that. In this case, I add them. Instead of subtract them, it's the opposite of that.